Hi, this is a video about proof of concept claim number two, specifically about selecting evidence. A lot of people have had trouble with this cog skill, so I wanted to give you an example of some really great evidence for claim number two. Um, I have here a bulb that's being lit by one battery, and if I connect this voltmeter across the two sides of the bulb, I can, say, I can see the pressure difference across the bulb is 1.33 volts. So um, I can tell that this, this bulb is like kind of bright or not so bright. Um, and the PD is 1.32 volts or so. Um, let me contrast that with, actually I'll leave this connected. And I'm just going to add a battery to this battery holder. A result that you've already seen at this point. If I connect two, both bulbs together, I can see that the bulb is really bright when the pressure difference across the bulb is 2.66. So the PD equals 2.66 volts. Oops, sorry, so you can see that. Um, and remember, the claim that we're talking about is more brightness means more pressure difference, or less brightness means less pressure difference. These two measurements together show us that a really bright bulb has a greater pressure difference across it, and a not so bright bulb has a less pressure difference across it. Three things that are really important about this evidence. This evidence contains measured values. That is, I'm actually including numbers that I've measured. And if you want to, you can use these numbers. You can use these actual measurements in your own work. Um, I actually, this contains um, real observations. Specifically, the bulb is not so bright and the bulb is really bright. These observations and values are actual observations that we are making that you can see in front of you. And lastly, um, this evidence connects directly and completely to the claim. That is, I haven't just shown one bright bulb and said, ooh, look, the pressure difference across it is really bright. I've shown two different bulbs. One of them is not bright and has a low pressure difference. One of them is really bright and has a high pressure difference. You actually have data in your measurements, in your labs, to support this claim and to support all of the claims in the proof of concept document. It is your job to find those measurements or come into class and make those measurements again if you need to, to actually show the, um, the claim to be either valid or invalid. One last thing that I haven't done that I also need to do, I'm gonna move the bulb out of the way for this, is I need to show a diagram. So for example, that diagram could look like that. A very simple diagram, but I would want to annotate maybe 2.6 volts and show that the bulb is super bright or something like that. Use some of the things that we've done to annotate this bulb. I could even do this, high and low, or 2.6 and zero, 2.6 and zero, high, low. All of this is an example of an annotated, annotated diagram that is relevant to this specific claim. And if you want to get a high cog skill score on selecting evidence for this, you need to actually show that you understand how to, in, how to demonstrate that evidence through an annotated circuit diagram. The other claims, of course, show different things. So maybe you'll want to show current for one of them or whatever. Um, but these annotations and these circuit diagrams are going to be very important for your uh, selection of evidence cog skill. I haven't explained anything about explaining the connection between the evidence and the cog skill. 
explanation or justify an explanation is a different cog skill. I haven't made a video about that one, but look at the rubric closely. I'm going to write that as a hint here. Use the rubrics and look fors. Use the rubrics and look fors for both the selection of evidence and justify an explanation to show exactly what you are expected to do to get a high cog skill grade.